Hi guys, welcome to Root Stem and welcome to this Codex review! Woohoo, Eldar! Hi guys, thank you very much for joining me. I've just taken the cellophane off and then <laughs> just taking the cellophane off the beautiful Elder Codex and I'm saying it's beautiful because I really like any artwork but I have been an Elder player for a very long time and for some reason I don't know why I'm actually really excited about this particular edition of the Codex mainly because it's a big lad and it's harking back to the days of second edition where we are going to also not only get Craftworld Eldar in here as they now call them we're also going to be getting pirates and we're going to be getting harlequins. So the first 80 pages of this book is actually artwork and telling you about the history of the Aladari or as I will refer to them in future bits of this codex, I'm going to refer to them as the Eldar. We've got little tiny bits regarding the pirates and of course the Yanari and the Harlequins. I'm surprised I've not changed the name of that. We've also got the big lad himself, giant ass avatar, which I will be buying one of them once the model is released. Some of the artwork in here is really, really nice. Kind of harkens back a little bit to my feelings on when they used Games Workshop. It used to be the, um, it was the White Dwarf, but then you kind of like got that art compendium book that we did every now and again. That was quite a nice uh, little addition, but don't get me wrong, it wasn't a sustainable model, but this kind of reminds me a little bit of that. And um, we've got some nice, some nice patterns, some nice graphics. Fleets of Infamy. This is going to be an interesting read. Uh, of course, talking about the Corsairs, which is the Elder Pirates. I'm really glad that they've actually put the sort of Corsairs into the actual book itself. That's going to be really, really uh, fascinating to uh, to go through. Harlequins and Hosts of the Dead, you know, regarding your. Um, Wraith, uh, Wraith Lords and of course your Wraith Guard. All the Aspect Warriors just detailing them on who who they are and talking about kind of like the Phoenix Lords. So like Fugan, Baroth, Jane Zar, Malgan Ra, Karandras. Yeah, this looks like it's going to be a very interesting book and read. Don't get me wrong, not all everybody is going to have. Not all the Aspects are... Got a Phoenix Lord, but majority of them do. Wonders of the Stars, Craft World, Guardian Hosts. Mm. Some of the artwork in this is fantastic. I'm really impressed. Classic photo. I do like some of this art. I really have kind of gone to town a little bit on these guys. I don't feel like they've skimped. But anyway, we're not really here to look at all of this stuff. We are here to look at the good stuff, the rules. So straight off, in the actual book, we've got a little section here that tells you about faction icon key. So a craft world icon, we've got Yanari icon, and we've got Harlequin icon, which basically stating that these are rules for craft world, these are rules for Yanari, and these are rules for the Harlequins. Standard sort of page layout telling you all about the different things. Aspect warrior powers is gonna be, oh, Pivotal rules. Um, chapter approved rules and of course Crusade. That's going to be an interesting one. I might actually do a separate video regarding the rules on Crusade. And then you've got Asinari Battle Detachments, which the Asurini. I'll, I'll be saying this wrong, so apologize if I do. I prefer to use the term Eldar for pretty much everything because I am old school in that sort of respect. But uh, Eldar Detachments gain the leaders of the War Horse ability. Units in the Asanari Detachment gain a Craft World Attributes ability. Troop units in Sari gain Objective Secured. And Legends of the War Horse, you can include a maximum of one R-Type model in each of your Asarani Detachments. That's fine. Travelling players, if your army is Battleforged, one Harlequin Patrol Detachment in your army can have this ability. A detachment with this ability is ignored for the Mission Rules Pack from required every unit in the army to have at least one faction keyword in common. In other words, you can have some Harlequins, but by the sounds of it, they are separate detachments. So you're not adding them to your battle force, which is a, eh, 
I would have liked just to have, a, uh, you know, an elite slot, just Harlequins. But there you go. Getting into the craft world section. Don't get me wrong, I am not a fan of this bit where they do all of the sort of the chapters or the this is a battle uh, houses or sort of the orc clans where they put them into a little page on their own. I'm not a fan of that because what I used to like is the fact that at the back of the book you got all of them together, all your warlord traits were together, all your actual stratagems were together. So rather than having to go backwards and forwards through the book, which I find you have to do in a lot of these codexes, if I'm honest, I find them very poorly laid out. But new codexes anyway, they are very poorly laid out. And I'm finding myself having to take tabs to make sure that I can get to the right point on the uh, <clears throat> within the codex itself. So I'm not a big fan of these, but... Coming into Ulfway, we've got Foresight of the Damned. I've already done a lot of this um, on my within my actual my uh, website. So if you go to rootstem.co.uk, you'll be able to find on the uh, latest section will be some information regarding some of the leaks that I actually saw regarding a lot of the faction-specific rules. Ulfway, it can reroll one rune wall and resolve an attacks. It's not great. Each time, a psychic each time it, uh, you take a psychic test for a psychic unit, if a psychic test taken for the unit, you add one. That's all right. That's a bit like Thousand Suns and Grey Knights. Although for me, <laughs> this should be across the board for Eldar in general because they're supposed to be some of the most ultimate psychics in the, in the galaxy as long as having the greatest technology. By and by. Models also get a six up in vulnerable save and can save mortal wounds on a five or five plus, so five or six. That's nice, that's quite a chunk. There's about four different little attributes there for all three. Not all of them are great, if I'm honest, but that's nice, nice little tiny bit. I can see that being used in a lot of competitive play, especially for the six up in vulnerable save, um, you know, with a lot of the larger weapons, like especially when you're going against space marines, when they've got a lot of minus four on some of their melters and some of even their plasmas have got minus four. It's quite useful to be able to actually get a save against it. Your warlord trait is regarding your strands of fate roll, which I've not got to yet. Um, you can choose to retain one additional dice. So if we get to have five dice, I think it's four dice. In, well, I think you roll six and depending on your game size, depends on how many dice you actually retain. I also got a ghost helm of, I'm not even pronouncing that. And you can have one additional power from the runes of fortune. And if you do a psychic test of nine or plus, nine plus, it can't be denied. That is cropping up quite a lot. This, if you do a psychic, like the Gene Steel Cult one with the, I think it's the Changeling. If you roll a double, it's not, you can't deny it. Um, there's some stuff for psychic powers with the Thousand Suns, where if you spend so many points, you can't deny it. It's cropping up quite, it seems to be a frequent rule that is coming across. Don't get me wrong, Space Marines haven't got anything, so... Be prepared for another Space Marine Codex in knife sometime soon, because it always is. And then you've got the Stratagem of Discipline of the Black Guardians. You can use it in the shooting phase or the fight phase, and you plus one to your squad's attacks. Great if your Guardians are any good. Additional Crash Worlds, we've got um, Eliatok. I think that's it again. Been doing this for a long time, so unfortunately, a lot of my pronunciation is actually done from when I was a kid, and it's kind of stuck in my head. Um, you've got some field craft where you get light cover if a unit's more than 12 inch away, if the attack is, is coming from you from more than 12 inch away, if the infantry or biker is entirely on um, or within a terrain feature and is more than 12 inch away from the enemies, it also gets dense cover as well. And you can ignore movement modifiers, pretty good for your banshees, but. The problem with that, I find a lot of this, you gain the benefits of light cover if you're more than X amount of inches away. Personally, in the new game, especially with the smaller table sizes, doesn't really matter much. So I actually find that that is very poor for uh, these guys. To me, it should just be, if you're shooting at a unit, they get light cover and they get dense cover. Or plus one to the saving throw, minus one to hit automatically. Don't bother with terminologies for cover, because if you come across an Iron Warrior's army, that just ignores benefits of cover. Poof, gone. No chance. You ain't got, you're not getting any benefits at all, apart from the fact that you can move through certain bits of terrain. And if somebody doesn't put a lot of craters down or trees, not much in the way of greatness from that. 
Your Master of Ambush allows a, a core unit to kind of perform and to keep shooting while performing an action. We'll get to what core units are, so we'll see whether or not that's any good. You've also got kind of they can uh, shift a unit of rangers and basically make them set up nine inches away, which makes me wonder if that because that's what they used to do. We used to come out of the crap world. Uh, I think you might have seen the part that I was talking about that maybe on a previous video uh, that they don't really kind of deep strike. Uh, inverted commas anymore they tend to just pop up or do the sort of space marine scout move um that's a pretty good relic uh the shift shroud where the bearers receiving the benefits of cover it can't be selected unless it's within 12 inch but again it's only going to really be affected on turn one turn two turn three majority of units within 12 inch nowadays it, it, there's no point having anything larger than those ranges you're literally just on top of each other straight away and Pathfinder Ambush for your stratagem. It just applies to rangers. And if it's within 60, if it's within strategic reserves, set it on the battlefield with an 18 inch of that enemy model and 9 inch away uh, of that enemy unit and more than 9 inch away from enemy models. At the start, end of a phase, of that ranger's unit can shoot as if it was your shooting phase. Pretty good, not a problem. Um, so you can kind of get in double lots of shots with a unit of rangers coming in from reserve. Build Tan, now this is, again, if you ever read at my website, rootstem.co.uk, this is the, it's piss poor, is, is basically what <laughs> this is. You've gone from four on Ulfway, three, and now down to two, and it even feels as if that's, you can't even be bothered, Games Workshop, with this particular one at the moment. Swordwind. Each time a unit of his attribute advances or makes a battle focus move, treat one, two, as three. So I'm gonna move faster, wicked. And I get to re-roll one hit roll from resolving a, a unit attack. Could be quite good if I've got a lot of heavy vehicles. I have got a lot of heavy vehicles, but by and by, especially when you're mixing it with things like uh Bell Tank Core unit within six, you know, for the wall or trait natural leader, that is not changed apart from the fact that I've just added core to it. And the Spirit Stone, uh, you can have one additional Psychic Power, that's pretty good. Um, and you can also re-roll one Psychic Test taken for the bearer. You should be able to re-roll all Psychic Tests unless you rolled like a double, but... Or you failed, sorry. So for me, that bit there of Beltan, which is the army that I play, is very shit. There we are. I've said the swear word, hopefully I'm still monetized. Uh, Wrath of the Shrines, though, the actual stratagem is pretty good. Belt an Aspect Warrior unit from your army, shoot or fight until the end of the phase. Each time a model in the unit makes an attack on a modified hit roll of six, scores one additional hit. That'll be good for large units of Dire Avengers, but Dire Avengers now, as we've already seen, are going to be an elite's choice. What the hell are we going to fill our troops with, the Beltan players? No idea. Hyenden has Stotic Endurance. This is where you get to add one to your attrition tests for a combat attrition. Yeah, because that's, that's Perlo, isn't it? And the other one is armor penetration characteristics are worsened by one. So if it's something that's a minus one, something that's a minus two, it goes down. So minus one becomes minus zero, minus two becomes minus one. That's pretty good when versing against kind of like Space Marines with our tactical doctrines. It's going to be a good counter. Especially since Ayedin, um, Ayinden is supposed to have a lot of Wraith Lords. Again, though, these Wraith Lords are possibly going to be in those elite choices. I have a funny feeling Elder players are going to be spending a hell of a lot of command points just on actually fielding a decent Aspect Warrior or Wraith army. Um, because let's be fair, Guardians are not that great. The Relic allows the Bearer to select a Spirit Horse unit within nine and... Uh, it adds one to its attack characteristics. That can be pretty good for some Wraith Blades. And it also gains Battle Focus. But, I'll be honest, Battle Focus is a bit... When we get later on and we get to that rule, I'll tell you why buy is poor. Uh, guided Wraith Sight as well is a stratagem. But if you uh, select one Spirit Stone and select one a Spirit Seer and select one Spirit Host Unit, the Spirit Host Unit is considered within the range of a Spirit Seer's Spirit Mark ability. I like that. I like the fact that you can actually do that across the um, across the gaps. But it's, whatever that spirit host ability is, because I've not looked at it yet, that could be like reroll ones to hit. That could be pretty good because it's pretty much giving the unit reroll ones to hit as long as both you, as long as the spirit seer unit is actually on the table. 
So I'm here and of course is the bikers. We've got the wild host, which you can rear all charge rolls made and you can declare a charge in which to turn your fell back. That's great, but Samhain's supposed to be all about the bikers. So for me, it should be we can declare, we can fall back and still shoot or we can you know, move and fire heavy weapons when they're advancing. That, it just feels like, oh, we can do great close combat things. Oh, well, your guardians are not very good on those jet bikes at close combat. Why have you given me this power? Again, poor decisions. Uh, also, to only two powers. It really does feel like someone had attention deficit disorder when they started off this particular book. You can have a, a Wild Rider Chieftain, so you add one to your Warlord's attack characteristics, and he's able to perform heroic intervention within six inches rather than three, and you can move up to within six. Yeah, that's what I want. I want me, uh, want me Autark to get in there and get stabbed. Um, Talisman of Taeon Char. I hate some of these words. I really need to get a translator for a lot of this. It is if it's every time again melee or focused, melee orientated. If a bearer, if a bearer made a move, a, a charge move or a orc intervened this turn, I'd want to have a strength and damage characteristics of the weapon and improve the AP by one. So we got a stronger weapon on that first turn, but nothing else. As long as they charged or heroically intervened. So if they get charged, forget it. You're not getting your bonus. Poor relic. Very poor. Uh, the Warriors of the Raging Winds. If you select a biker unit uh, until the end of a phase, it's eligible to, to declare a charge even if it advanced. Oh my good God. Oh my. Shining Spears. Uh, that's all people are going to take with some hand because that's really only the thing that it's going to affect. You're not going to do it with your guardian bike, your jet bike, guardian jet bike squads, as it used to be called, or wild riders, or whatever they are now. You're just not going to do it. Now, when we get into the craft world, far flung craft worlds, making your own craft world, these are way superior to everything else I've come across. You get to pick two of these, and when you look at the one, for example, this Children of the Open Skies, add one to your movement characteristic. Add two if you've got fly keyword, and each time you make an advance, it's treated, dice rolls treated as one or two is a three instead. That's way better than the one that Bale Tan's getting at the moment. Children of Cain, each time a model makes a melee attack with an unmodified wound roll of six, add one to the damage characteristic. Add one to your strength. We've got, add one to attack weapon strength. If that model but the units is below its starting strength, I want to the attack, so you're getting revenge. Hail of Doom, each time a model is attribute with a shuriken weapon and a modified hit roll of six automatically wounds the target. That's amazing. Um, you can, the swift strikes in the unit shooting phase, each time a unit is attribute selected to shoot, unless that unit fell off his turn, counts as having to remain stationary. Moving forward with some heavy weapons, that's always great. Webway Warriors, when you come in from reinforcements, an unmodified hit roll of a six, causes one additional hit that just says so that you could be shooting and charging with that so much better so much better in making your own craft rather than actually selecting the ones that games workshops done for you that is insane because normally it should be the other way around it should be that the, the craft world one should have more of a benefits than these guys and it they just don't so I'm going to move on and talk about the Harlequins. Now, this is something I have not really looked into for a long time. I've got a squad of Harlequins upstairs, um, but I've not really added to them because these are a squad that I had left over from when I used to have Harlequins in the first place. And the first models I ever purchased was a box set of 18 metal Harlequins. Always a great set, to be honest with you. Now, you've always got what's called a lead roll for your, uh, your warlord, for your, your HQ choice. And you're always going to have, uh, if you include any troop masters, um, then your units of normal Harlequins are, um, yeah, if your army includes any troop master models, if your warlord is a Harlequin model, your warlord must be a troop master model. Hmm, okay, whatever. Troop units in Harlequins attachment gain objective secured. Great, that's not a problem. There's some very, very weird light, dark, and twilight. This is, I quite like it, I quite like the idea that. You're not really picking a craft world, you're picking some form of uh, dance or you're looking at either the light the twilight or some form of the point of day. I'm not really going to go through, I'm going to have a proper good read of these myself properly, so I'm not going to go through this in here. But you don't get any Harlequin stuff until you get really to page 96. 
So looking at the stratagems that we've been given uh, for elder players, we've got one for Marshall Scission. I think that's going to come in quite often since you're now going to have to take a crap load of Guardian squads. Reroll those ones to hit. Blade Storm is probably going to be another one when it's an unmodified hit roll of six with a Shuriken weapon. Scores you an additional hit. That's probably going to be used a lot as well on your Dire Avenger units. Matchless Agility remains the same. Lightning Flast Reactions remains the same, but it is now what a point less. I think it used to be two points for that one. It is now one point. Quite like the idea of that, to be honest with you. I do like the Avengers uh, tactic uh, for the Dire Avengers when you are if, at the end of your shooting phase. So like one Dire Avengers unit from the arm that's below its starting strength for unit can shoot again. So if you've lost a guy, you can start shooting again. I quite like that. Uh, firing reposition is for outcast units for your rangers not to have the minus three when trying to do a battle focus again. I'll get to that later. You've also got one to try and bring your Phoenix Lords back. And the Avatar Resurgent power is still kind of there. Uh, but it's more of a, you don't remove it. It's in the fight phase. So when the Avatar gets killed, don't remove it. Add two to the model's attack characteristics. And it just smashes into the stuff before it actually dies. I quite like the idea of a Battle Psyker. So if you've got a Warlocks unit with four or more Warlocks. And you cast the Psychic Power for two CP, you can actually do both effects. I don't know if that should have been one. But we will see. You've still got one for a, casting additional power. That's always a great one. And, uh, you know, Unparalleled Mastery. And, of course, you've got... Um... Yeah, that's for when you're doing an action, sorry. Multifaceted Mine. So when you're doing, like, uh, any sort of psychic action, you can actually still cast a psychic power. That's pretty good. Your, you've got your relics. You know, you can actually have additional Warlord traits, relics, that type of thing. You see a council remains, so as long as you've got a warlock a unit in your armor that contains two or more models of model farseers within six, you can add one to the psychic tests of farseers within three inches of that warlock unit. Enemy models cannot target the farseer because, of course, it's taken. It's as if it's a. Uh, and you can only use the strategy in one, so that's a bit sh sugary. Yeah, you used to be able to do that all the time. You pretty much had to because a lot of the psychic powers for the Eldar used to be I sixes and sevens to be able to cast. We will see. On your next page, you've got linked fire for your fire prisms. That has been nerfed. One little bit that we didn't show us on the Weeb site, Games Workshop's website, is the fact that if you do linked fire, all the other fire prisms that you got can't fire their prism cannon. So you're pretty much you're adding the two shots to the original pick. Um, so you're not actually getting two different lots. So unless you're wanting to knock off your invulnerable saves, that's the only time I would see people using that stratagem. I can see fire prisms being dropped off a little bit because of that. And it's very rare you come across anything very, very heavy, unless it's some form of night that requires invulnerable saves. You still get your fire and fade, where you can actually do a shooting attack. After making the shooting attack, you can fall back, but you can't. You can, it's just a normal move up to seven. I don't know if that's going to be... Again, it's two points for that. Probably not going to get used as much as you want. Phantasm is now changed. It's no longer redeploying your units. You're kind of putting units into strategic reserve. Uh, and you can select up to three. It doesn't... You can actually exceed your, how many units you haven't got on the tabletop. It's quite nice, I suppose, to be able to do something like that. Webway Strike has remained pretty much the same as well. Uh, but it's now... But it does have particular units that you can put in there. I've noticed there's no sky strikes, so there's nothing coming down, you know, no vehicles coming down from um, the ceiling. Forewarned has kind of remained. I think it's two points rather than uh, the three, uh, the one that it used to be. It's any, if a, it's a Farseer unit, I can see the target. It picks a unit, friendly unit within 12, but it has to be within 18 inch of a unit that turned up from reinforcement, so you can't shoot. Fire uh, Dark Reapers from across the board like you used to be able to. Um, gaining wounds back, that's always a great one. If you were within six inches of uh, Spirit C, you actually gain more wounds back. I'm wondering if there's any rules for the old, um, and oh, what they used to call it? Not an engine C, yeah, what? Um, I've forgotten. It was the one where you could actually repair um, any of your tanks. It was a bit like a tech priest for the Eldar, which I've actually got one of those models, but it looks like I'm not going to be able to use it anymore. 
Eldritch Storm Power is free CP. Now, it's a war it's a psychic action with a warp charge of five. And any number of Farseer models can attempt to perform a psychic action. It means it can be stopped. It's a three point Eldritch Storm that can be stopped. No, no I don't think that's going to get played that often, if I'm completely honest. Web Wish Striker, like I say, I've already gone through that. Wire Weave Grenades for your Shroud Runners. That's quite nice. You kind of force in um, some subtraction of movement. So you're making a, a unit slow down, especially if it's a slower one anyway. Um, you can, like aggressors, you could all, you could really, really start to limit that particular unit. Shield Discharge is different now. It used to just cause mortal wounds on someone. Now we select an enemy unit within 12 inch. Uh, enemy unit cannot fire overwatch or set to defend, and each time a model in the enemy unit makes a melee attack, subtract one from the hit roll. Pretty good if you're actually, you know, using your other close combat units with a wave serpent. I have eight wave serpents, I am not going to lie. So I, I like to have a bit of a an armoured fist of um, elder forces when I <laughs> try and take them into battle. Grenade pack for your swooping orcs is now a stratagem. Starhawk missile is improved. It's now 2D3 when firing at some fit, at aircraft, but it has to be specifically aircraft. There's used to be units that can fly. Um, you resonate a shard for D cannon, Doom Weaver, or Shadow Weaver. Units that contain any models until the end of a phase. Each time an attack is made by a model that is equipped with a D cannon. Da -da -da -da. About an enemy unit within 12 inches of a friendly resonate shard units, you can move over here. Well, I'm not quite sure what they are, but we will find out. As we proceed, you get more and more stuff that's effectively just for uh, Harlequin. So it's as if you've now got the Harlequin section of the book. So majority of these stratagems are just for Harlequins, which is Oblivion's Kiss. I think I've come across that before, to be honest with you. That's not really, really changed. Although I've never... Cosmetic Blur. There's a starting movement phase when the Harlequins unit advances... From your army advances more than eight inch. Ooh. Units at the start of your next command phase. Until the start of your next command phase, you <laughs> unit have a three plus invulnerable save. Very tasty, but it is two points to be able to do that. So this is interesting for X sharp powers that you're going to be able to give the Aspect Warrior squads. Um, you now, when you give it a power, you also plus one to the wound, ballistic skill, and attack. Now, it is making me. Um, it is making me wonder if some of these some of these guys are not going to be great. Like the, I wonder if they've downgraded the Aspect Warrior at the X Shark in your Aspect Warrior squads, which I have. That's going to be really disappointing because they, you know, they've really taken a downturn over the years. Um, you also cannot take uh, you can um, any Crusade Force. Uh, sorry, not any Crusade Force. I think any force you can't take the same power multiple times. It's a bit of a yeah, but. You kind of that's pretty much a standard, I think, in a lot of cases nowadays. So, I've gone past the Crimson Hunter one because I was intrigued into what you actually get for the rest. Now, you used to get six, now you're getting three each. Are they any good? This is what I'm wanting to know. Um, and they're quite expensive, but not cheap. So, Dire Avengers, you've got a defensive stance, so that's 20 points. That's dear. Uh, in a shooting phase, when the unit contains a Dire Avengers x sharp model, models in the unit can make uh, attacks with ranged weapons, even whilst the unit is within engagement range of enemy units, and can do so even if other friendly units are within engagement range of those enemy units. If they do, these attacks can only target units that are within engagement range. So that's pretty good. You can actually target something in close combat if you think you're going to be sat on objectives. But Dire Avengers are not going to be sat on objectives anymore. They are no longer a troop's choice. Shredding Fire, um, this is probably going to be the one that you're going to be doing most. While well, the unit contains a Dire Avenger X Sharp model, each time a model um, within the unit has, has the Shuriken, with the Shuriken is equipped with a Shuriken weapon, you activate the Shuriken ability on a 5 plus instead of a 6. Dire Avenger, from what I've seen in the leaks, the catapults are now going to be minus 2 anyway, and it's only going to bump them up to minus 3. So um, I'm not sure I would bother with that one, if I'm completely honest. And then you've got Stand Firm. And then you've got a Dire Avenger X Shark. Uh, your unit has got a Detective Secured ability, has it? 
Uh, and it also counts as having two, mo two models. Add one to the leadership characteristics. So in other words, you've got to pay 10 points for a Dire of Energy unit to be able to sit on an objective successfully. The more and more I read this book, folks, the more and more I don't like it. Now, I'm actually going to be reading the ones that I am more interested in because I've already got units. Surprisingly, to say I've got these models that are this old, I've never bought a unit Shining Spears, which I should really do so, I think. So I'm just going to skip to Howling Banshees. Again, 20 points, 10 points, 15 points. These are expensive. Expensive upgrades, especially 20 points for defensive stance. That is really pricey to say that if you've just taken a charge... From an enemy, majority of the time, Dower Avenger squads and half of them are not there. That is very pricey. Um, so, Graceful Avoidance, while well, the unit contains Howling Banshee X Shark, models and units have a 4 plus invulnerable save against melee attacks. Why can't I just have a 4 up invulnerable save? Or 5 up invulnerable save? I think they've actually got 5 up invulnerable anyway. But 4 up invulnerable save against melee attacks. Wicked. <sighs> No Shredding Shriek. Each time a unit finishes a charge move, you can select one enemy unit with engagement range of that unit. And uh, that, that, this unit's Banshee mo X Sharp model. Roll 1d6 and a 2 up. It suffers one mortal wound and minus is one from combat attrition. 10 points. Yeah. Patient Shrieks add one to the damage characteristics of melee attacks made by the Howling Banshee's X Sharp. So, them two are for X Sharp only, and that's for the squad. Piss poor games workshop. Scorpions, let's have a look. Crushing blows. Jesus Christ. Someone needs 30 points. Right, okay. Um crushing blows. Each time this unit striking scorpion X sharp model makes a melee attack as targets a non-titanic unit. It is scored with attack automatically wounds with target. Okay, well, don't mind that, but again, it's just the X sharp, and I'm not quite sure how many attacks these guys are gonna get. Uh, deadly Ambush, while the unit contains a striker scorpion X shark, wholly within the terrain feature each time. A melee attack is made by a model in the unit, add one to the attacker's hit roll and improve the armor penetration characteristic by one. That's pretty good. That's pretty good. Is it just the X shark model? No, oh, while a unit um, contains an X shark model. Scorpion Sting, each time the unit is selected to fight, if the unit contains a striking scorpion X shark model, until the fight is resolved, replace the ability of the unit striking Scorpion X-Shark models Mandy Blasters. Each time a bearer makes a melee attack that targets a non-vehicle or modified wound roll of a 5 and inflicts one mortal wound in addition on the target in addition to any normal damage. 30 points. Unless I've got 6 attacks, I ain't paying 30 points for that. Dark Reapers, one of my most Favourite units, actually, in the game. What have you guys got? Well, it's 15, 15, 25. Uh, Bringers of Death for 25. The unit's Dark Reaper X Shark is equipped with a Reaper Launcher, a Shuriken Cannon. Each time it selects a shoot, it makes one additional attack. If this unit's Dark Reaper X Shark is equipped with the Aladari Missile Launcher or Tempest Missile Launcher, each time the model makes a range attack. Oh. So because I've now got an Aladari Missile Launcher, I don't get additional shots. I can ignore benefits of cover. I think I'll not even bother with that one. Each time a unit's Dark Reaper model makes a ranged attack, add one to the attack's wound roll. Yeah. Unit containing a Dark Reaper X Shark does not suffer the penalty to the hit rolls incurred. All right, so that's no longer an ability. That used to be an ability. This feels like a huge downgrade. Fire Dragons, right, okay, let's have a look at you. <sighs> While this unit contains a Fire Dragon X Shark model, 20 points, add 4 inches to the river character. That's pretty good. It depends, of course, upon what the range of them are, but I mean, if it's 12, that would make it 16. A smaller board, pretty good. Uh, Burning Heat. While this unit contains a Fire Dragon X Shark, each time a model of this unit makes a range attack, that targets the unit within 9 inch. Nah. Each time a model in this unit makes a range attack, targets a unit within 9 inch of a hit, it's scored the attack on my loot. I suppose that could be pretty good, but it's 25 points. Again, just depends on the size of your squad and what you're doing with it. Dragon's Bite. Makes a range attack, it targets a vehicle or monster. 
but in half range. If it's got a fusion gun or fire pike, add two to the damage characteristic. If it's got a dragon breath, add one to the damage characteristic. Now that could be all right. It all depends on how far the dragon breath flaming. You've got to get really, really close. I'm not quite sure. Fire dragons to me always get in there, get do something, and then get killed. Even though they've got heavy armor on there, they tend to die because they are stuck in the middle of stuff and they are not, in my personal humble opinion, they are not a great um, close combat unit. Now I have skipped past the page which details pivotal roles, which is pretty much similar to what the um, expert warriors do. But again, I might come back to the Harlequins at a later date. Um, the chapter approved rules are quite like in Warcraft. It's where you do a psychic action for a warp charger four, and you can get pretty much three points. But every time you do it, it goes up by one. Not the the, the most fantastic. Um, you've got Wrath of Cain as well, which is score one victory point at the end of a battle round if one or more enemy units were destroyed by a melee attack, or one if they were destroyed by a range attack. Score two if at the end of the battle round if one or more enemy units were destroyed by a melee attack by an aspect warrior unit from your army at this battle round, and more than one were destroyed by a range attack. So you need aspect warriors. But again, elite choices. Shadow operations for scouting the enemy. That's a, it's got to be done by a ranger's unit. Very specific, very specific. Two points, not with holy within the opponent's deployment zone, four points if you are. Battlefield Supremacy. If you select a secondary objective and your armor contains a web webway gate unit. Hmm. Yeah, I'm good. Right, okay, so I've just gone to the relic section and I really do feel like this is some amazing amount of padding. And I mean an amazing amount of padding. Just look at that. That cat could have fit on one page. Hey guys, your book's massive. Yeah, because majority in it is just... You're filling it out properly here, aren't you? Wow. Uh, let's have a look. So ones that I tended to use... I did use a Phoenix Gem quite a while. Uh, quite a, a, For a bit. Um, I mean, that one is the first time the bear is destroyed. Roll a D6 on a 2 plus. Keep it to one side. At the end of the current phase, set the bearer back up as close as possible to the previous position and not with an engagement range. D3 wounds remaining. That's improved. Fire Saber, have you improved? Uh, each time, yeah, plus 3 strength, minus 4, 2 damage. And then each time an unmodified hit roll of a 6 inflicts one mortal wound on a target in addition. That's pretty good, to be honest. That is pretty good. That's a new one, Weeping Stones for your Strands of Fate. And the Storage Sword. Again, just spreading it out. I really don't understand why they are. These are mainly Harlequin. So these, these are Freldar. These are Harlequins. I feel like we've got less relics now. And then what's these? Army, Army rules. Are these relics? I think these are still relics, but it looks like these are relics for your um, fire dragons. For It was an Avenging Blade for the Dire Avengers. I suppose that's all right if you're wanting to upgrade some of these guys. Howling Banshees with a Crone Scream. Um, spider's Bite, which is a particular... Pretty good if you've actually got a melee blade. That Reaper X shot with a Reaper launcher only. If an enemy unit uh, has a destroyed strike one for combat attrition tests. Combat attrition tests are fine if a unit takes them. But quite a lot of units seem to be able to uh, either pass them automatically without them coming across or they'll just. They can easily pass morale. So let's have a look at some Warlord traits. So ambush of blades, um, select one friendly core within nine. Each time a model makes a melee attack. Melee attack, right, okay. Improve the armor penetration characteristic of one. I suppose that's not too bad. Falcon swiftness, add two to them where warlords move. Again, ignore effects difficult ground and when it makes a battle muckers move, it's an automatic six. So that's really changed. Once per turn, you can reroll one roll, wound, or damage roll. That's crap. Walk over many paths, especially for nowadays. 
Um, when the saving for your wall, oh, once per turn when the saving for your warlord. See, that's really good, Fate's Messenger. Once per turn, when a saving throw made for this warlord is failed, you can change the damage characteristic of that attack to zero. That is crap. That is just pretty much well overpowered. Because you know that's going to be well overpowered, especially if you've got a, a jet biking attack running up and down. Really good. I quite like that one. Um, Mark of the Ink. Comparable Hunter. Add one to your strength. Unmodified one of those six. Uh, that's to his ranged attacks. I suppose that's fine if you've got one with the rocket launcher. And that's so you can get your command points back, which used to be a standard thing on Autarchs. Man. Psychic powers. Now, this is normally where they are. They used to come into the throat. They used to sort of like come into their own, really. They used to have quite a lot of good psychic powers. Your first ones is mainly, for me, especially the way they were stating it, Webway Dance and Mirror of Minds. This is ones that you're going to be giving to your uh, Harlequins. Then you've got the Runes of Battle. So Runes of Battle, standard for a lot of the Elder, fast, uh, a lot of the elder units. And I'm actually going to get the old powers up because these are still sixes and sevens so conceal reveal initially this is now a warp charge of six it was a warp charge of six so that has not changed their psychic powers needed to come down i don't know why they've stayed as they are um conceal select one friendly um core unit within 18 it's got to be a core unit can receive the benefits of light cover Again, that used to be subtract one, so it was basically a minus one to hit. So now you get the benefits of light cover, so you're getting a plus one to your save, but a lot of the time you're going to be in cover. Um, if you also like one enemy unit within 18 until the start of the next psychic phase, each time an SRI model from your army makes an attack, the enemy does not receive the benefits of cover. That's pretty much remained the same. Embolden, Horrify, used to be a Warp Charger 6, you are now a Warp Charger 7, so you've gone up, you better have got better. So like one core unit, again, with core units, within 18, until the start of your next phase, add 2 to your leadership, is what you used to do before. And uh, you do get a benefit now, at the start of the fight phase, if your units within engagement range of enemy units, you can fight first. That's not bad, Horrify. Horrify used to subtract one from your enemy's leadership. So Horrify now subtracts two from your enemy's leadership. In the start of the fight phase, that unit within engagement range of enemies, uh, you have to fight last. All right, so they've added a bit and increased it, but it's still high. Seven's high. Seven's a 50-50 chance. It's like saying you need four plus to hit. It's not the best. Uh, enhance and drain. Select one craft world core unit. I add one to the attacks. Hit roll with melee weapons. That is pretty much remain the same. Drain used to be minus one from your enemies. Subtract one from your enemies, yeah. And that's actually come down. Surprisingly, that's now six. So protect and jinx. Protect. Um, improve the save characteristic of a model by one to the maximum of two plus. And jinx, worsen the save characteristic. As remain the same, what are you still seven? Still high. Still really high to be able to get him. Quick and restrain. So you used to be able to um, do another move. So an Asari core unit or character within 18 inch. That unit can immediately make a normal move advance and fall back as if it were moving phase. If it does so, this unit is not eligible to shoot or declare a charge. What is the point of that then? That was the point of having quickened before, was getting those units up there. There's no point to that. So like one enemy unit within 18 for restrain, half the model's move characteristics, it cannot perform actions. I don't see a point in that. And then empower. So you used to be able to, empower you used to add one to the wound rolls in the fight phase, what we got now. Uh, it has gone up to a warp charge of seven. 
It's till the start of the next attack. Each time a model in the unit makes a melee attack, add one to the attack as one roll. So part one. So it's exactly the same, but now it costs more to cast. That's, again, I'm going to keep repeating this word because I think it can get through the senses, but that's piss boy. That really is piss boy. So runes of fate, and of course you've still got runes of fortune as well. You're allowed to pick between these two. So runes of fate... We've got the old school guide. Now it used to be 24 inches, pick a, a unit. And it used to be a walk charge of seven. It's now six, so that's come down by one. But it's changed to 18, so you can only do it to units within 18. Unless, if a psychic test is 10 or more. What? Why has it got to be 10 or more to be able to select a unit within? <sighs> yeah, whatever. Doom. <laughs> Doom has stayed remain the same. Um, it's like one enemy unit within 18 inches. So that's gone, that's got worse because it used to be 24. So the start of your next psychic phase, units from your army that attack it can uh, reroll wound roll. If you get a 10 or more, it's 24 inches. Why have I put that in there? What is the point of that? Why have you worsened the power? But said that if you get a larger result, we'll wait until we get to some of the actual psychers. Let's see if we get some pluses to these check these rolls because this is pathetic. It really is. Fortune. So effectively, it used to give you a five up feel no pain. Um, Fortune is still a. It's a six. It used to be a seven. Again, eighteen inches. Again, if you get more than five plus, then it's it's twenty four. Why? I don't know. Five up for the wasp wound is lost because it's the same exactly the same power again. It can only be done on core or character units. Executioner, have you uh, got worse? Probably have. Executioner, uh, warp charge of seven, eighteen inch warp charge of seven. Um, so like one of the units excluding units with sort of a wounds characteristic of nine or less within eighteen inch. Uh, and, uh, enemy unit suffers D3 mortal wounds. If any models are destroyed as a result of these mortal wounds, the enemy unit suffers another D3 mortal wounds. If the result is was 10 or more, you can select one enemy unit within 24 inches. Why? I have no idea. I need to keep... I need to keep just not questioning that. It's exactly the same power. Uh, the will... used to have a warp charge of 5. Now it has a warp charge of 6. So that's gone up. Has it changed? The unit gains objects are secured. Each time a morale test is taken, it's automatically passed, and if you perform an action, it can still make attacks. That's actually a lot better than it used to be, but it used to be six inch. Is it still six inches? It is. If the psychic test is eight or more, you can select a unit within 24 inches. Wow. Mind War. It used to be one of my favorites back in the day, did Mind War. Still a warp charge of seven. It's like one enemy character within 18, roll a d6, add a psychic's leadership. Add your opponent's rolls a d6, add their leadership. Um, if the total result is greater than your opponent's result, the enemy character suffers a number of mortal wounds equal to the difference. If the result of the psychic test was 10 or more, you can roll 2d3 instead of 1d6, add the result to the leadership. I'm not quite sure where we're getting this from with this, or if you roll 10 plus, you get lots of benefits. Runes of Fortune was added with one of the additional books. You used to replace your smite to be able to cast this. I don't think you do anymore, which is, is pretty good. Um, now, Faithful Divergence is completely different. It used to be a warp charge of four. <laughs> now it's a warp charge of six. But it is a different thing. You gain a command point if manifested. And uh, it used to be able to reroll single hit wound or save. Which strike? Used to be a warp charge of four, now a warp charge of five. Christ. It's like one enemy psyker, if that psyker has an affin... Oh, I don't know what that is. You must select its way seeker model. Okay. Until the start of your next psychic phase, each time you select a model makes a melee attack. If the attack successfully wounds a target, inflicts one mortal wound on the target in the attack sequence ends. That is crap. 
You used to add two to the damage characteristic of the model's psychic powers. Of the model's melee, of the psychic's melee powers. That is pathetic. That really is pathetic. Uh, Ghost Walk. Take that. Charge roll. Add two. Ghost Walk. Um, yep. Yeah. Walk charge five. Walk charge of six. Um... Oh, walk charge of six. Used to be within six inches, now it's within 12. So that's got better. Crushing Orb. So one enemy character. It used to be walk charge of four and select one enemy character. Now it's a walk charge of six. Uh, select an enemy unit within 18. Roll, roll 3d6, adding two for each result. It was a vehicle or a monster unit. If it contains, or if it contains six or more models, if you get a four up, it got one mortal wound. For each four, it was one mortal wound. I suppose it's pretty good if you're versing a vehicle, but you used to be able to just target psychos with that. Focus Will has walked back to Earth. If manifest is select one unit within 24 inches of his psyker until the start of the next psychic phase, add two to your psychic tests. Fucking hell, you're pretty much going to be taking that power every single time because you need it with these heavy duty rolls. I mean, you need a six to be able to even cast that off. And impair sensors. So, taking hold of an enemy unit. Warp charge of, yep, same warp charge, same range, six and 18. Till the start of your next psychic phase, that enemy unit can be affected by aura abilities from your opponent's army. Nope, that's changed. Used to be, um, select an enemy unit with 18. So we'll start of your next when that unit is chosen to shoot with models in that unit can only target the closest visible enemy unit unless the target of the attack is within 18 inches. I suppose that's a bit pants when you actually think about it in pair sensors. Was rubbish. Not great. Again, utter crap coming through here. It really does feel like someone's done this book but has no interest in playing Eldar at all. So now getting on to some of the more basic rules for the um eldar you've got battle focus which is basically it, the unit is eligible to shoot in which you turn it advances but if it does so until the end of the phase models in the unit can only make attacks with assault or pistol weapons they are equipped with and when resolving those attacks the unit is treated as having remained stationary that's pretty good um or in the shooting phase after these units finished shooting you can uh, unless it fell back or advanced, then you can do a battle focus move, which basically means you can move D6 inches. Now, the problem is with this, is this bit. Battle focus moves through area terrain. So if you're in area terrain, which majority of terrain now on the board is area terrain, you're minus three from the movement. So what's the point? There's no point in doing battle focus because you're going to be majority of the time, you're going to be in those area terrain pieces, unless... You're building a battlefield yourself and you decide you're going to be a bit of an arsehole and just put in lots and lots and lots of different um, pieces of terrain that isn't area terrain, then, yeah. It's, it's, a, it's a very poor rule. A very poor addition to the army. Uh, Favour the cane is for your Phoenix Lords. They've got a four open vulnerable save. Can only lose a maximum of three wounds. And they can never have a relic or warlord trait, which I thought that was fine anyway, to be honest. Strands of Fate, I'm going to get to in a moment. Shuriken weapons. Ah, shuriken weapons are actually have changed. You've improved the attack's armor penetration characteristic by two. Ah, I was told it was only in increasing it to a minus three. That has... Hmm, okay, right, no problem. Shuriken weapons, definitely going to be the one now. So it's either minus three or minus four if you take in the... By Revengers. Advanced positions is pretty much the same as what it is in any other force where you can set up nine inches away from enemy units. And sudden assault during deployment, if every, unit, if every model in this unit has the ability, you can set up prepared a sudden assault instead of setting up on the battlefield. If you do so, then in reinforcement steps in your movement phase, you can set up anywhere. So that's deep strike. So, Strands of Fate. So, if, if every unit in the army has got the Eldar keyword or unaligned, then you can do a Strands of Fate roll. So what you do is you roll 6d6, and you can retain a number of these dice depending on the game size. Majority of the time, it's either going to be incursion on strike force, so between three and four. And 
you get to keep these retained dice to the side as a reminder of the results. <laughs> I'll make a note of them for each instance of the dice result. This is really complicated. Basically, if you roll a one, you can have an automatic six on an advanced roll. If you roll a two, you can have an automatic six on a charge roll. If you roll a three, you can have an automatic six on a psychic test, which is in need. If you get a four, it's a hit roll, five, it's a wound roll, six is a saving throw. And then you can save them. Uh, before making any roll of any type shown above for a unit with a strands of fate ability, if any of the retained dice have a corresponding um, what type of roll, then you do not have to use to manipulate it in this round. To do so, you just, uh, if the type involves 1d6, do not roll, instead count it as d6. If the type of roll involves more than 1d6, treat one of those dice as a modified as six. I do like it, but I think the fact that you only get four, and I think you only get it, you can only manipulate a different type of roll once during this battle round as shown before. Low. At the start of each of the battle round, you can make a strand to do so. Roll 6d6 and you can retain, depending on the battle size. Keep these retained dice to one side as a reminder of their results. Or make a note of them, for instance, for dice results. It doesn't say, state that you get rid of it, so you could probably stack them up. So if you wanted the saving throw, but it does state that you can only, for instance, the dice roll result can only manipulate a different type of roll once during this battle round, as shown below, and that's battle round. So if you give yourself a six saving throw, if you got charged and did yourself a six saving throw, and then you attack back, and then in the next turn, the next sort of opponent's turn, it's not a new battle round. You're not going to be able to do your strands of fate. Ooh, uh, is that good? Is that bad? Not quite sure. So some of the units I'm wanting to have a look at, we've got the Avatar of Cain. I'm going to look at the Phoenix uh, Lord. I'm going to look at the Phoenix Lords. I'm also going to look at um, the Aspect Warriors and possibly some of the tanks. So I'm not going to look at everything. Uh, Avatar, I think it's been shown around, is a is a bit of a beast. Quite a lot of attacks. Um, and effectively, it can just run up and just smush you. You've got a 4 of invulnerable save, and also damage characteristic is halved. Always good. Always good. Burning Demise explodes. Each unit within 6 suffers D3 mortal wounds, so you want to get him in there. And he's an HQ choice. He is not... <laughs> He's a HQ. He ain't a, um, he is not a, yeah. You can only ever have one of those as well. You know, I can only ever include one avatar more. There's not a lot of war. HQ, he's coming for you. So as I feared, the Farseers have not got any better. They are pretty weak when it comes to psychic abilities. Um, not the strongest, not the greatest. You're talking a four-up invulnerable save. The ghost helm has improved because you just never suffer perils. That's fine. But you used to get uh, your runes of fate, which is now runes of the Farseer, used to allow you to... Yeah, you used to allow you to re-roll a psychic test. Now, a lot of the psychic tests that we've just seen in there are very, very high. And as you can see from the the fact that you can only have a warlock, you can only use the warlock council once per game. What is the point? You are elder armies rely on that psychic buff, and you are not going to be getting that psychic buff with this force. Not if you're just running a pure craft world. There's probably some manipulation with the harlequins. I have seen people going, oh, they're going to be the next tournament army because then they're going to go out and buy lots of models because of power gaming twats. Um, but no, no buff. I mean, it's still only no smiting two psychic powers from either Runes of Fate and Runes of Fortune. You're going to find yourself taking a Farseer. You're going to find yourself taking the one way plus two, and then you're going to be casting one of a power. And that, to me, is not a Farseer. Farseer is supposed to direct your army it's supposed to be able to give some psychic goodness and, and get on with these guys so the phoenix lords have all got their own stat line there's some slight variations you've got sort of different weapons you've got the different um some of them have got an increased toughness like fugan 
Jane Sar has got a bit of an increase in movement. You've got different weapons, of course. Some of these weapons are really, really pretty cool. I mean, the Seer Song with the D6 plus four damage from that Assault Lance is gonna be pretty good. They've also got Battle Focus. With a lot of them having Assault on their weapons is pretty good. Uh, that particular uh, Azraman, which is one of my favorites to use at the moment, the Sword of a Sewer. Each time an attack is made uh, with this weapon and a modified wound roll of a six inflicts D3 mortal wounds on the enemy in addition to any other damage. And bearing in mind he's got six attacks needing twos to hit. He's got strength for six, minus three, three damage. He is wrecking units. He's wrecking a model. He's wrecking whatever he wants to wreck. Uh, Jane Zar with the Blade of Destruction. She's not real. I mean, she's got sort of this Terror's lam uh, Lament. Each time you select an enemy unit as a target for charge made by the bearer's unit until the end of the phase, the enemy unit cannot overwatch said friend. That's fine. When enemy unit is within engagement range, subtract one from the attack characteristics of any models in that unit. That's pretty good. So the amount of attacks coming back at her is going to be sort of low. The toughness has always always been low with these guys anyway, because it's Eldar. They're always dead squishy, as uh, some people would put it. Uh, Karandras. He's another one of my favourites, although I haven't used him for a while because he was pretty weak. Uh, the fact that he didn't have an invulnerable save used to really, really hurt. Now he's got a four pin run, of course. Um, what's his weapons here? He's got his... Oh, what about the fact that... Just, why don't you just call it a biting blade? So... <laughs> um, each time an attack is made with this weapon, make two attacks instead of one for his, I'm guessing that's for his chain sword. And then Aaron, uh, Aaron's Bane, which is his power fist. Strength times two, so it's gonna be strength eight, minus four, two damage a piece, that's pretty good. Uh, each time bearer makes a melee attack, an unmodified wound roll of a six inflicts two mortal wounds on a target in addition to any other damage, that is pretty good. And he's got sustained assault, so each time a melee attack is made by this model and modified hit roll of a six scores one additional hit. Attacks generated by this ability cannot benefit from the model's scorpion's bite. All right, okay, so that does, bring, that does rein it in a little bit. I do like the fact that they've got all these lovely pictures. Jane Zar and Malgan Ra are the only ones that's got new models. Everyone else is still the old, old model that's nearly as old as I am. Um... Mal guitar has improved. We've probably seen some of these rules already. And, uh, you know, units within his, his own units within six have got objectives secured. That's always good. Inescapable accuracy. He always, you know, ignores the benefits of dense cover. So, a spirit seer. When a craft world spirit host units within six, each time a model in that unit makes an attack reroll, a wound roll of one. It used to be a hit roll. Never mind. And you can have one psychic power. Attempt to deny one psychic power. It knows smite and one psychic power from the runes of discipline. Oh, the runes of fortune. Right, okay. So, yeah, actually, uh, yeah. No, well, runes of fortune. Yeah, that's the one that they used to be able to get in the third party book. Guardians. Let's have a look at you. You've got a four up save now. Your platform. Zero to two platforms. Hmm. Or oh, one serpent scale platform model for every 10 storm guardians and one heavy weapons platform for every 10 guardians. So you can have up to 20. Uh, while the shooting is within the range of an objective, you can re -roll, hit rolls of one. And uh, when the last guardian defender model in this unit is destroyed, any remaining heavy weapon platforms is also destroyed. Heavy weapon platforms models do not count when determining unit strength or whether they are the units below half strength. Uh, the destruction of heavy weapon platforms is ignored for the purposes of morale tests. It doesn't say that you've actually got to have somebody shooting it. That's pretty good. You just, it's just a, I haven't got to have somebody shooting it. Fine. Storm Guardians. I've bought a box uh, to actually turn into Storm Guardians. Let's have a look at you guys. Serpent Shield, five up vulnerable save against ranged attacks, and each time an unmodified rune roll of one or two always fails. So while the platform is still alive, your guys are going to be still alive, and of course, if you get within range of an objective marker, reroll hit rolls of one. The platform, same as before. So Warlocks are an interesting one. Warlocks are now an elite choice, rather than it being HQ. 
But if you have a farseer in modeling your detachment, one Warlox unit for each farseer, one Warlox unit can be included in the detachment without taking up a battlefield slot. So effectively, if you've got a farseer, you can take a seer council, you can take a unit of Warlocks without it actually taking up a slot. It's all right. I, just, I used to like taking Warlocks as that ipso facto sometimes, that character. But hey ho. Um, Warlock Skyrunners is interesting because they're only on a 4-up save and I think some of the bikers have now got a 3-up save but I don't know yet, I've not got two of them uh, they've still got the rune armour they can still only cast one psychic power and if they're in a squad then they can cast more so getting on to the Aspect Warriors we've got some Dire Avengers and Fire Dragons on this page why have not got a nice bit of artwork there, I don't know you've got plenty of artwork elsewhere filling up uh, Sports Games Workshop Dire Avengers, uh, Avenger Catapult now for me is pretty good with the Assault 3 and the fact that it's going to be a minus 4 if you get a 6 to wound. That's pretty good. Um, each time this unit itself can actually have, it can actually take a bit of a punch, which is a bit of a shame that it's no longer a troop's choice. If that were a troop's choice, I would be happy with a lot of the downfalls of this codex, but it isn't. Uh, he is now an elite's choice, and being a Bale Tam player where you're supposed to have a lot of Aspect Warriors, my army is built on Aspect Warriors, I am now suffering the consequences of my choices, which is it's not fair. I'm not saying not fair. It's just a little bit galling when things like that, particularly when things like that do happen. Um, I'm just hoping the points cost for these guys have gone down. So they are allowed to do, they've no longer got five up. Um, hitting in overwatch which is fine because you have to spend a command point to fire overwatch nowadays anyway um your dinosaur is doing automatic as long as it successfully wounds it does an automatic mortal wound pretty good with that to be honest because i do like the dire swords um if i've got a shimmer shield and you have a shimmer shield it's only one if you've got one with a gauntlet i suppose that might be one where a lot of people are going to be taking that because shimmer shields making them got a four up and vulnerable save is pretty good you can also do an action without it failing and still fire weapons. Your fire dragons. Um, I've noticed, by the way, I mean, if you can take three wounds apiece, they're going to be pretty good then. Yeah. Fire dragons, you are looking at... Um, the fusion gun is still 12 inches. But it's that strength 9 at minus 4, that D6 plus 2 damage. And the fact that you can advance and still fire it, so you, can, you know your minimum move is going to be 8. Five up in, run three up armor, four up uh, toughness, and you can re-roll wound rolls of one against vehicles and monsters. But still, not got any good powers to that. Howling Banshees, one of my favorite units to actually field, simply because everyone hates being charged by Howling Banshees. Um, they've now got three attacks apiece, about time. Um, four attacks are for your X-Shark. Um, we've got five up in, run. Whirling Death, each time a model in this unit makes a melee attack, if the model makes a charge, it's one to the attack's wound roll. So they've actually got, effectively, to be strength of four. And then when you're versing things like guardian, Guardsmen, you're just decimating them on two, so that is four. Each unit is eligible to declare a charge in turn in which it advanced, and each time an attack is made, rather this unit subtract one from the attack's hit roll. There's no longer the pluses, though, to the uh, movement. So you're no longer getting your plus four. Three, I think it was. Yeah, no longer getting your plus three when you're doing an advance or charge roll, um, which is a bit of a shame. Scorpions, I'm wondering if I'm going to start taking these again. Let's have a look at you guys. So, three attacks apiece, four attacks on for the actual uh, sergeant. Probably going to be taking these guys again. Each time a bearer makes a melee attack, that targets a unit, excluding vehicles, and a modified wound roll of a six, inflicts one mortal wound of a target in addition to any other damage. Manda Blasters have got quite a lot better on that, especially the amount of attacks that these guys have got. There's going to be some pretty good death there. And I've also got Sustained Assault. Each time a melee attack is made by a model in this unit, an unmodified hit roll of a 6 scores 1 additional hits. It cannot be, you know, cannot be affected by Manda Blasters. I'm going to have to have two sets of dice uh, just to be able to do the attacks with Striking Scorpions. So another... Another crap thing here. Wraith Lord has now moved into an Elite's Choice section. That is not fun for me. Um, Wraith Lords have always been HQ. They always used to be known as the Elder Dreadnought. I 
don't know if I like that, to be honest with you. Um, Rift Guard, uh, still tough. Always tough as old boots, but we don't have the Goon's Fortune. That's probably fine. Minus one from uh, any damage coming in. And, of course, I've got a what, uh, the Rift Construct. So they are allowed to actually shoot while within engagement range. They've actually got three attacks apiece as well, but they used to have Rift Guard Fists, and they haven't got that anymore. So it's just additional attacks, but you no longer can pummel. It used to be minus one, I think, as well, and D3 damage. So you used to be able to pummel people quite nicely with a bunch of Wraith Guard. Wraith Blades have got three attacks apiece as well, which is about goddamn time. Um, and if you've got, because I've got the Ghost Sword variant mix, and the Ghost Sword, and I've got the Ghost Axe variant. So it's still a strength of seven, still minus three, still two up damage, and of course, it's going to have four shields, so they've got a four up invulnerable save. They're still hard as nails. Rift Lords, nine wounds, toughness of eight. That is pretty hard. Ghost Glaive can make additional attacks. Got four attacks, so you can sweep through Space Marines. Wow. Now, I do have... Oh, it can equip with Ghost Blade and two of the following weapons. Yep. I might be uh, might be taking one of those. Let's see what, uh, what devastation I can cause with my Rift Lord. So these are the ones I wanted to look at, the Vipers and the Wind Riders, because they used to be, especially the Wind Riders, used to be a, I'm just getting another look at the other. The Vipers used to be a free up save, but the Wind Riders, which is what I call, you know, jet bike, they used to have a four up save, and now they've actually got a free up save. Which it sounds daft, but just having that one little change makes them more survivable. Still got a scatter laser. I would take that, I don't know. I'd much prefer to take the Shuriken Cannon, to be honest. Um, I've always taken Shuriken Cannons. I've got a lot of Shuriken Cannons. So, each time a model in the unit makes an attack with a twin Shuriken Catapult against an enemy, the unit that's within range of an objective marker, reroll it, roll a one. I've not got that. I've got a boatload of Shuriken Cannons. So, Shuriken Cannon death coming in everywhere, but it is a heavy weapon now, Shuriken Cannon. Used to be Assault. So, I'm not going to be able to advance and still fire that. But it does mean that my tanks are going to be able to have... I mean, it's also minus one and shuriken with two damage. Vipers, I've actually got the... Um, my Vipers themselves have got the shuriken cannon and I've got the shuriken... I think they've got two shuriken cannons. So if my Vipers have still got two shuriken cannons, I've not used them for a while, but if they've still got the two shuriken cannons, they're going to be pretty impressive. Now, I haven't actually got a unit of Warp Spiders, but I'm going to actually look at this because Warp Spiders have become quite nice. Simply because the, they've got the Warp Jump Generator allows them to be able to do a 2d6 battle focus move instead of 1d6, but if you roll a, a double one, you suffer a mortal wound. Chances of that are quite slim, to be honest. But I've also got this Flicker Jump, so each time somebody tries to charge them, they can move d6 inches. So the first time someone tries to charge the unit, it just moves D6 inches away. <laughs> I quite like the idea of like that. Warp spiders are just literally flickering about like they used to do everywhere on the battlefield. And the death spinner as well being an assault D6 blast with a minus two. That's gonna that's pretty good infantry, uh, it's a pretty good infantry rinser. Dark Reapers, I'm going to be looking at because they used to be one of my favourite units to use and one of the most feared units that a lot of people really didn't like going against. Now, it's... Yeah, they, they, they're still a free up to hit and they've still got two attacks. They've got two attacks in close combat. Why they've got two attacks in close combat, I have no idea. Um, because he would have thought they would have been much more of a ranged unit. They've got Strands of Fate, but they don't have Battle Focus. So, because we don't have battle focus, you're not going to be able to fire with Dark Reapers and then fall back. I've also noticed that they are limiting it to five men. Which is really irritating for me, because I've actually got a squad of eight. And I'm not going to be able to break it down into two squads of five. Because my initial one, I used to be able to have three. So I actually had a squad of four. I think they're doing that now and saying that it's five because the new plastics are out which is really irritating um, because it does mean that I'm going to be limiting myself on what I can do with my uh, Dark Reapers, which is a bit of a shame with Games Workshop. You sometimes have to take that into consideration, especially now that I can't just go out and buy one or two models. I've actually got to buy five. 
I might see if I can get hold of a couple of second hand ones. There might be somebody selling them, to be honest. Uh, the Reaper launcher has not really changed. Star Swarm missiles are still strength 5, minus 2, 2 damage. Two shots apiece. Star Shot is still strength 8, minus 1, 3 damage. That's pretty good. But the, uh, the problem is now is that they're heavy and you can't move and fire. You can't, well, you can move and fire with them, but you're getting a minus 1 to hit. And the inescapable accuracy is basically the unit. If it makes a range attack, target does not receive the benefits of dense cover. That's fine. But it used to be that it used to just be freeze to hit regardless. So they've definitely taken a nerf back to the face. And again, it's going to depend on how many points these are going to cost. I don't mind a unit taking a nerf back to the face if I get more of them. But if I don't get more of them or become more expensive, it does rattle me some. Now, I wasn't going to talk about a lot of the tanks. I was mainly going to be looking at the fire prism. But I have just come across something very tasty with the falcon. Now, the Falcon seem to have gone into the Wayside. Wave Serpents are a hell of a lot of a better transport because they are, of course, a transport option. It's not a heavy support choice. This is a heavy support choice. But look at this with some of these rules. Now, it can still only transport a small unit, but it's this Cloud Strike ability. So if this transport model starts the, unit, set, the setup in Southern Assault, which is, of course, Elder's version of the Deep Strike, it can be set up on the battlefield in the reinforcement step of your first, second, or third movement phase, regardless of any mission rules. Any units embarked within this transport can immediately disembark as if it had been set up on a battlefield in this way, and they must not, uh, and they must, but they must set up more than nine inches away from enemy models. That is amazing. That is amazing. Now, the thing is, unfortunately, it can only carry six. But, um, Phoenix Lord, infantry, infantry models. So, you could effectively have five Fire Dragons and Fugan in a Falcon and just <laughs> turn up and just be like, you're right, lads. Uh, yeah, that tank's going down. Ooh, that's naughty. Now, I've already talked about Wave Serpents in uh, on my website because we managed to find a data sheet that was actually leaked. Now, Wave Serpents to me, really good unit, always really good, can carry 12, meaning that, of course, your Wraith Constructs, you can have up to six. So you can have five plus a character in there. Now, toughness seven, a 13, and, of course, with the Wave Serpent Shield, can't be damaged now on a one to three. Yes, I have turned the light on because it was getting kind of dark in here. Um, they are still one of the best transports in the game, but I can see them being very expensive. They've got a power rating of eight. They've always been one of the most expensive ones in the game. So we will see when we come to the points section. Fire Prisms are, again, another one of my favourite units. I've still got one of the old school metal ones that likes to try and fall over every time. <laughs> I try and use it. Um, it hasn't really got any special abilities. It used to be able to fire twice when it moved up to half. This is no longer the case. So you're just pretty much going to have two shots with your strength 14, minus 5, and 3d3 damage focused lance. Is it going to be any good at this particular point? I'm not sure. I think Spirit Stones are going to have to be put onto this, and so is um, any crystal targeting matrix. Um, we're going to see how many points they're going to cost. It, I think Elder Force is going to be very, um, very small. And I don't think a lot of these changes are doing it any good. The Aspect Warriors are really, yeah, they've got five up in one saves and stuff, but the powers that they've been given are just, uh, they're, they're really, really poor. So let's start comparing some points to the other book. Yay! So. I'm going to have a look at some of the Phoenix uh, Lords first because, of course, they're pretty tasty at the moment. Azraman has come down by 10 points. That's good. Jenzar. Right, you, my darling. You have gone up by 25 points. Um, where's Morgan Ra? Morgan Ra used to be... He, he stayed the same cost. Got some more better abilities now, so I don't... I, I see that as a bit of a win. Karandras, uh, you've gone up five points. I suppose you've got better abilities. You're more likely to be taken. Still, that's going to be a bit of a win. Now, the Farseer is an Autax. So, Autax, 
There's still 80 points, but then you've got jump generators, swooping hawk wings, reaper launchers, uh, howling banshee masks. So adding all that to your guy is going to make you very expensive. According to this, an autark was just 80 points. Hmm. Uh, oh, yeah, but it was an autark with swooping hawk wings. Swooping hawk wings now is going to set you back 105 points for that autark, whereas it used to be 90. Uh, autark. I don't think you used to be able to fusion gun before, but that's quite good actually. I am probably going to be taking a couple of uh, new style autarks. I'm honest, I've actually got an old autark with a warp jump generator. So, <laughs> well, with an autark jump generator, sorry. So I've actually got one of them already. Might uh, might field that in my, my next game. Avatar of Kane. So, an Avatar of Kane used to be 200 points. He's now 270. He is a beast. He is, but I mean, what was it? 250 still for a land raider? So I mean, he can take more damage than a land raider could. That might be a good offset. Um, Farseers. Now, Farseers used to be 115 points. They have gone down to 90. Thank you, Workshop. You are saving the Farseer there by making it a very cheaper character unit than what it used to be because let's be fair he ain't getting no psychic powers off um, also you gotta remember as well now that runes of fate are no longer taking over your smite you are literally gonna be casting stuff wrong um singing uh your fancy sky runners have come down by 15 points that's pretty good guardian defenders right guardian defenders used to be eight points a model they are now nine points a model so they've gone up so i'm not quite sure why they've gone up and still not as good as what they used to be so great to be honest with you the heavy weapon platform has also gone up a lot that has gone up eight points across the board but weapons have come down so let's combine so one uh, heavy weapon platform with uh, a missile launch you used to be looking at 32 points you're now looking at 25 so we've got a decrease uh, rangers are exactly the same as they used to be. I actually don't think rangers have changed that much in the way they're playing the rules. See my previous uh, unboxing for that. Dire Avengers. Here we go. This is what I'm after. Dire Avengers. How many points are Dire Avengers? Used to be 11. Now they are 12. So you still don't get a lot of bang for your buck because you never got a lot of bang for your buck anyway. And I thought you might have got a bit more bang for your buck. But you're still not going to get a lot of ban for your book. It's very, very limited. You are, you, you've gone up another 10 points for having a squad of 10. Fire Dragons, what are you looking at? Fire Dragons used to be 18 points. Now you're 23. They've gone up a lot. Howling Banshees used to be 15 and now 18. They've gone up a lot. Striking Scorpions used to be 13, now 17. They've gone up a hell of a lot. So your Aspect Warrior Forces are going to be really expensive. Elder Force has, apart from some of the characters, you're shaving points off your characters, but you're not saving them anywhere else. Yeah, Wind Riders, they've stayed the same. Shuriken Cannon variant, yep, stayed the same, but Scarlet Laser variants come down. Um, your Vipers, have they changed? Because Vipers used to be, be no point. Yep, they've come down because, of course, the points costs of the weapons have changed. That's always a benefit. Wraith Lords. Right, the Wraith Lords used to be every support. There we go. Wraith Lord, 100 points plus weapons. See, they're still 100 points, but they've uh, got a lot better in the terms of abilities. And the... Uh, plus whatever, I think it's gone up. A lot of the weapons has come down for them, which is pretty good. The plus whatever has definitely gone up in points. but I can see some changes. I mean, those... those ooh. Now, Warlocks are only 20 points a model, but the 40 points if you have them on your own. They used to be, Warlock, unit size used to be 50 points on its own, and it used to be 40 points if you had it as a Conclave, which is two or more models. They've gone down. I can see them becoming a unit that you are going to start fielding alongside your Farsi, and now you've saved some points on that. Rift Guard, Rift Blades. Yeah, 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 elites, there we go. Rift Guard, 33 points, now to 40, so they've definitely gone up. 
Uh, Wraith Blades used to be 35 points, they're now 40 again, and it's cost you an extra five. So, in actual fact, for me to field my Wraith Blades is now 10 points more a model. That's painful. Mm. I'm hoping a lot of the mini rules will kick in, but I feel like a lot of the elders lost a lot of flavor. They've also lost a lot of their abilities, especially since all of the Aspect Warriors are more expensive than what they used to be. I've not even got the Dark Reapers yet. All the Aspect Warriors are a lot more expensive than they used to be. Now, Dark Reapers, here we go. But now, Dark Reapers are set at five models. So you can't have less, you can't have more. They are set at five models. They are 150 points. So let's have a look at you, Dark Reapers. So Dark Reapers are used to be 32 points a model. And so you're saving 10 points on Dark Reapers. I'm not sure if that's going to be worth it. Because effectively, you're 50, if you're moving and firing with Dark Reapers now, you are 50-50 hitting and you can't get the hell out of dodge. Which... Yeah, basically means they're just going to get shot up. We're going to get shot to shit. You're... So let's have a look at Falcons. Now, Falcons have really improved as an actual unit. And you can tell because the Falcon is now 140 points compared to its 115 counterpart. That's because you can now come in and, and drop down right next to somebody. Always a benefit. Right, so if I have a look at some of these weapons here, some of these weapons are pretty much... Same as what they used to be. Bright Lance is still 20. Elder Missile Launcher has come down to 15. Not quite sure why. Um, Crystal Targeting Matrix used to be 5 points. It's now 10. Spirit Stones is still 10. Star Engines is still 10. Um, and Vector Engines is still 10. So all those have remained the same. Fire Prism. Fire Prism used to be 155. It's now 160. And again... Yeah, that's no real points cost, it's just gone up. Pretty much everything has gone up. Some Guardians, have you gone up? Yep, you've gone up and up. Dedicated Transport, the Wave Serpent. So, Wave Serpent used to be 130 points a model. They are now 140 points a model. So they have also gone up. So when I've played before in a 2,000 point game and I've complained that I have not got a lot of models because my Elder are actually expensive, they've now become even more pissing expensive. Ugh. So there's my review of the Aladari or Elder Codex. There's my review of the Elder Codex um, for 2022. It's a joke, really. It's uh, it's a very thick book that they are basically pushing on anybody that plays the Elven style forces in 40k. The Harlequins have to be in here as well. There's no real improvements. There's no awesome abilities like like there was when the Tau Codex came out. Um, no, I'm not impressed. I was hoping for a bit more. Apologies about that, guys. The battery died on uh, my camera there. Uh, but yeah, wasn't not impressed. Not in, I've been waiting for this for a while. And if I'm honest, I'm not impressed with the book. Um, I'm finding it. Some of the stuff in here seems to be incredibly lazy. They've decided to revamp some of the range. But for example, Dark Reapers, why have you then set it? to five models um it's never been five models before i couldn't understand if it was a brand new unit like they've been doing with the space marines can't stand with dark reapers really can't so that's going to mess up some of my army types as well but very thank you very much for watching guys please like share subscribe hit that notification button if you do want to see more if you want to see me whinge about more books <laughs> sometime i mean don't get me wrong the last couple have been awful this one gene stealer cult both codexes have been absolutely terrible and the Gene Sealer Cult Codex, I'll come to that in one of my blog posts someday, but that's absolutely terrible to play with as well. But thank you very much, guys. We'll see you next time.